Studies reveal that children's rights cannot be granted in a framework that diminishes women's status and discriminates women. Infringement on the rights of women and children has indeed a negative impact on the society vis-à-vis -vis access to myriads of resources including education, healthcare, ownership of property and decision-making. Forms of such violence include but not limited to sexual harassment, female gender mutilation, early marriage, physical assault, battery, molestation, and barbaric cultural practices. The remedy starts from parents and community leaders in imbibing good cultural practices among children in the family and community. Government should implement principles of human rights at all levels of our educational system, irrespective of the sex involved. Everyone should know and understand that the rights of all persons are sacred. We must let go of religious and cultural biases which have held us down and which do us no good in the real sense. It is as well imperative for stakeholders to collaborate in the rigorous raising of awareness and by bringing violators to justice through the full enforcement of both existing and new laws. Most of these issues are contained in Chapter 2 of the 1999 Constitution and popularly known as Social Economic Rights. The version of a uh, state VAP law, it entails laws, I mean the enactment of the laws that affect women and children. It states the laws, the punishment and the punishments. And part of the VAP law spoke about um, compensation for victims, the survivors too. My advice for those women that cannot voice out, there are other things you can do. You understand? If you cannot come out publicly to ask for help, you can ask your neighbor for help. You can make a call. That is why we are having NGOs. In Oshobo, Joshua Kuchide, NT News.